grab your hymn book and turn to page 198. 198. There is power in the blood. Regular or honky tonk? What? You want regular or honky tonk? Reg regular, please. Oh, I don't know. Regular. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, use a mic. Use a mic. Okay, roger that. You don't have to. 198. 100. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily as praises to sing? There's wonderful power. Blood. There is power, power, wonder, power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder, working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. All right, now turn over to page 44. And can it be that I should gain? Page 44. <clears throat> so we told the choir today, the best way to spread Christian cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Love and bled 
Young Adult Church Locked In, scheduled for October 27th at 6 p.m. at the church. And once again, we're locking the kids in for the night. Uh, so if you want to have more information on that, please see Sister Shirley or Sister Amanda Klotz. They're going to lock the kids up. Yes, sir. I, I heard them talking about this when they saw the wide open spaces last week over here, right? Yeah, we're going to have air mattresses. <laughs> This is a, uh, it's living good, kind of, been the church here, there. All right. Anybody else have any more announcements? I know we're praying for Sister Jan, and. Uh, we should pray for them on the first when they go to the church garden. That too. Yeah. <laughs> first of <laughs> August. <laughs> August. Tuesday. Tuesday. This upcoming Tuesday, Bush Gardens trip. Pray for safety and fun, and and. I don't. That's a lost cause. Uh, <laughs> All right, I think that's all the announcements. All right, go in. Yes, ma'am. A ladies' event that we're doing here at the church. Um, you don't have to paint if you don't want to. I know it's been announced that the ladies paint. We're just going to have lunch fellowships, and then we're going to get instructor here to do the painting, Bible verses, and anybody that's interested. And when is that? September 9th. September 9th. Ladies' fellowship and fun night, painting and fellowship. It starts at noon. Starts at noon. All right. <laughs> All right, I had another one mark here. Okay, last song, 222, There is a Fountain. Number 222, There is a Fountain. Dear 
dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransom church of God be set to say no more. Be set. sign up for the evening, so Pastor Joseph. And I don't think I saw any names on the paper at all, so. I don't know that I've ever 
tongue back in my life. Everybody's a comedian. I guess you have to get in on it. It's irritating. Look at this. Don't be having the YouTube on you, please, if you do. Now, would it be in this thing? Because there's a lot of stuff in here. Or it can't be. I'll just mark it in a minute. Pastor, would you like to sing a song while you look? Yes, yes. <laughs> It's not the ones that are right here, right? <laughs> I'm, just I'm just curious. Put something in front of us, we're like, Lord, where is it at? What is this one? Hello, hello, hello. Okay. In the mess of this old world, sometimes I need a word from heaven that everything's okay. I try to walk by faith, but sometimes I'm so afraid. And I cannot see how God can make a way. But then I think he never failed me, never left me. Not one time have I cried out, and my voice he has not heard. Never failed me, and he won't start today. He will make a way. He's never failed me. As broken as you feel, all troubles here are real. And I know it feels like God's forsaken you. But child, don't lose your faith. He is working while you wait. So just hold on. He will bring you through. He's never failed me. Not one time have I cried out, and my voice he has not heard, never failed me, and he won't start today, he will make a way, he's never failed me, he's been faithful, so faithful, so I choose to trust him now. He will make a way somehow, so just believe and you will say, He's never failed me, He never left me. Not one time have I cried out, and my voice He has not heard. Never failed me, and He won't start today, He will make a way. He's never failed me. Oh my gosh, Jonathan's in the booth. <laughs> there is no telling what's going to come out of this. I don't know what's going on with this, uh, but I praise the Lord you're here tonight. I want to praise the Lord that I'm here. 
and I hope and pray God will be here. Amen. Amen. Some of the things, uh, and it sounds like a missionary call, but it's not. Um, some of the things that you look at in life. I want to preach to you on a thought tonight about following Jesus. You ever thought about that? Following him? Look at Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. All right. This thing says it's on. I'd rather be off. <laughs> Mark, Mark chapter uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 28. I just want to preach, pre preach and preach to you both times. I want to preach to you on the thought of following Jesus. Uh, what a great thing, what a great example, what a great individual to follow, amen? Uh, if you can't follow him, if you're going to, in order to follow him, you've got to stand by that book, right? Uh, in order to follow him, you're going to have to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, amen? And uh, he has to break that contrite spirit, so... But that's not what I want to talk about tonight. Um, look at uh, verse 28, if you would, please. Mark 10 and verse 28. Mark 10, 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or fathers or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake, and the gospels. But he shall receive, look at it, a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and so forth. Um, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the opportunity to pre pre proclaim your word tonight. Uh, Lord, there seems to be some obstacles here, and I pray, God, that you'll help me to move over them. Pray, God, that you'll use this message, how humble it is, Lord, uh, that this humble servant, in spite of my defects, and pray, God, that you'll bless it and give these folks something that they can go home on. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, one of the things most people, when they talk about following Jesus, right away they go to a missionary. But do you know that every Christian that save under the sound of my voice ought to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, seriously, um, it's talking about the word follow is a familiar word in the vocabulary. You find it, now you can write it down if you want. John chapter 1, verse 43, he talks, he said, follow me. Luke chapter 5, verse 27, it's a familiar word in the Bible. Uh, it says follow. Likewise, he said in Peter and, and Andrew, follow me. Um, and I will make you fishers of men, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Now, I understand missionaries use it, but it's not strictly for a missionary. It's, it's for Christians, people that had come to know Jesus Christ, and we ought to be followers of him. What do you mean by that? Well, to follow someone is almost to mimic them, right? To watch what they do, do what they do, and try to, you know, as far as when it comes to the Lord, you ought to yield to his purpose in your life, not yours. And there's a lot of people that follow things, they just don't follow him. Amen. Uh, brethren, uh, it, we're coming into an age, and I, I hate this, I don't want to see this, but where the body of Christ is starting to drift away from God. Uh, well, I have an excuse. Uh, I, 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 can't, I can't make Wednesday night, I can't make Sunday night. Well, why can't you make Wednesday night and Sunday night? Well, you know, I have, a, I have to babe my kids, and, or I have to do this. Or I, you know what you're doing? You're putting something in front of him. And a long while, for a long while, and you say, all oh, preacher, don't do that. But I, I was being realistic a long while. I thought, hey, it's, maybe it's me. You know? And then I look around, and Ben's teaching on a Wednesday night. And oh, by the way, a very good topic. People got up and said, hey, you know, kid's doing a great job. But nobody was showing in order to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have to step up to the plate and show up. Amen. You say, well, preacher, no, I, I'm not trying to beat you up. You cannot follow him if you want. That's your prerogative. That's what we have. This is liberty to do what you want. But don't use it for occasion of the flesh. You know what the flesh would say? I did it when I first got saved. Well, I'm up on the top of, near the top of the roof, and hornets were dropping down off the roof. 
and I'm trying to do some work up there, and it was on a Wednesday night, and I remember it vividly. I decided at that point, it's more important for me to get this fixed than to go to Wednesday night meeting. And you know what? I missed a blessing. Every time you miss coming, you're going to end up missing something. And I'm nosy. I like to learn a lot of things and get in on a lot of things. But I love to be there when God's there. And it's not because, hey, well, we're here, preacher. I'm not, I'm not beating you up. I'm glad you're here. But those ones that are starting to allow, it, it starts out slow. You know what the Lord just simply said? Follow me. Follow me. And that's what you want, I want to talk to you about tonight. S.I. Millen, in his book, None of These Diseases, tells the story of a young woman who wanted to go to college. But her heart sank when she read a question on the application and said this, Are you a leader? I don't know what that has to do with anything. Being both honest and conscientious, she wrote no and returned the application, expecting the worst. To her surprise, she received this letter from her college. Dear applicant, a study of the application form reveals that this year our college will have 1,452 new leaders. We are accepting you because we feel it is imperative that we have at least one follower. That's an amazing thing. Everybody wants to lead, but nobody wants to follow. You know what he said to him? Follow me and I will make you fishers. I'm not asking you to follow me. I'm telling you, you ought to follow him. Follow this book and stand where you need to stand. Do you realize people watch you and they critique you and they'll condemn you and they'll say things? I'm telling you for your own good. And I shouldn't be telling y'all because you're here. But, I'm, you know, I know they're on YouTube, and if you can't be here, you can't be here. I understand that. But there's some that can, and you're, you're starting to make a habit out of it. And it's not good. I thought for a long time, I thought it's me. And it might still be me. But why don't you show up when Ben does it? He did an interesting study on um, the fruit. I, I was getting ready to say it. I'm, you have to give this old man a chance to get it up. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit. And he went through it methodically and ran everything you could run on it. And if you didn't get anything out of that, you're not going to get anything in anything. Amen? That was a good study. He's very thorough in his study. So I thought, well, yeah, maybe it's just me. And so I'll cut him loose for a while. Maybe I'll sit down and, you know, resharpen my pencil or do something. And it's the same thing. And I'm just saying, be careful. You know, following Jesus, I'm going to give you three things, and I promise I'll let you go. Number one, following Jesus is not without purpose. There's a purpose to follow him. Amen? Uh, Sister Vicki, I remember when Brother Hunter uh, had a burden to get over to the Philippines. You guys had just really given up the church there and decided, you know, and I, I totally understand Miss Vicki wanted to be with her kids, keep her kids, and God worked all that out. I mean, he did. He worked every bit of it out. And Brother Hunter simply said this, would you pray, preacher, First of all, can I, we come to your church because you had just given up your church? Believe it or not, they, Miss Vicky and the Hunters have been with us the longest, I believe. Am I not mistaken? About 30-some years? Maybe you ought to get a, when you get to heaven, you'll get an extra star <laughs> or something. But the, the, the point that I'm trying to drive home is that uh, Brother Hunter said, would you pray for us? You know, there's a purpose for following Jesus Christ. He's never going to lead you the wrong way. Uh, following Jesus Christ, it's not without purpose. You have a purpose for what you're doing. Brother Hunter was trying to follow the leading of Jesus Christ, of God in his life. And he didn't want to quit doing something for God. It was just pretty obvious that church up there was not going anywhere. It's, whether he pastored anyone, I don't think it ever did go anywhere. But it had nothing to do with him. But you can be wanting to do right, be in the wrong place to do it. And he felt like burden. He said, I've been burdened for the Philippines. Hey, listen. You have kids, young kids. You don't want to take them to a foreign country. I mean, <laughs> honey, go. <laughs> right now, I don't, I don't have that burden right now. <laughs> and Brother Hunter simply said this, and I'm not trying to kick at anybody. Just pray for us, preacher, would you? And we did. And 
what it ended, ended up, they went over there, the whole family. But there was a reason, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brother Hunter went over there to pastor. That wasn't what God wanted him to do. Am I wrong? You say, sometimes you can be following him and along the way make some steps, but guess what? We have a God that can correct that. Now listen, you want to hear a blessing? On a, any given day, well, let me back up a minute. Brother Hunter called me and said, Preacher, uh, you know, I'm trying this church, and, and they got churches everywhere you can turn a corner, I guess. And he said it just didn't work out. But there was a guy, and I forget his name, who had a radio station that had to go back to the States. What do you think I ought to do? Well, you know what? God opens doors for, with opportunities, right? What's it going to hurt? You're there. What's it going to stop? Brother Hunter is... is He's very good at building things and technical things and stuff like that. He loves doing that. And do you know what the end result is? Can I give you a shocker? You, you got a home missionary, the member of this church, whose family's a member of the church, that reaches on any given day 1.5 million people. You tell me one church, one preacher, that over his lifetime would eat, reach out to 1.5 million people on any given day he has teaching Bible school over there. He's got Bible courses in his radio station, and he's spreading the gospel everywhere. I'm just saying, God doesn't allow things to go in your life without purpose. And you know what? Trust in the Lord with all your might. Lean not that our understanding. All our ways acknowledge him. Guess what? He'll direct thy paths. He'll do it for you. But you know what the problem is? We get frustrated. And God has, he said, be your followers. Come on, boys, walk with me, follow me. And you know what they did? Following takes faith in that which you follow. You got to have faith. He said, trust in me with all thine heart. Well, you're going to have to trust in something. So following Jesus is not without purpose. There was a purpose that he had behind it. I, I promise you I'm not going to be long because I've winded from this morning. He was motivated. He followed him because of what? Sometimes you want to follow the Lord because you're just grateful to him. Anybody not grateful to God? Do you know what he did for you? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Isn't that a blessing? Do you imagine what God did? I, I, I would there and venture to say that not anyone that's ever came to this church that ever will come to their church would say, hey, uh, go die for my enemy. We were not his friends. We were his enemies. But you know what? We need to show gratitude. Um, Jesus spoke to those that followed him in my sake in Mark chapter 10 and verse 29. Uh, he followed them, uh, him, as in an expression of gratitude. Why should I serve the Lord? Why should I go where he wants me to go? Gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God. It's not about you. It's about glorifying God. I've often been irritated by many countries, and I get upset with it because... You know, our, we send missionaries over there trying to propagate the gospel and uh, what they're doing to them. But, you know, that's God's business. The gospel that we're supposed to spread. Amen? Mark chapter 10, verse 20, it said, Jesus also spoke the following to him, gospel sake. Go out for the gospel sake. You know why those missionaries go? And I, my heart breaks for that poor lady that lost her husband. I... I but my sentiments to Chuck was this, and what uh, I'll talk with the board about and the church about, uh, we're going to continue to support that lady. Why? Because she needs support. She needs help. Uh, you can support her not just financially, you can support her prayerfully. Uh, pray God it never happens to you. Uh, I'm sure Miss Vicki prays for Howard constantly about protecting him where he's at and getting back safely and all that, and she should, and so should his church. 
the gospel that we spread, the Great Commission. Uh, Christ had no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet but our feet to lead men in his way. He has no tongue but our tongues to tell them how he died. He has no help but our help to bring them to his side. We have to make a concerted effort. You know what? The, the effort is, is that following Jesus is not without purpose. Can I say, number two, that um, following Jesus is not without a price? It's going to cost you. I'm not talking financially. You're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to lose some things. You're going to lose some friends, people who you thought were your friends. You're going to lose, I lost family. But you know what? I praise God, Serena, that we stayed the course. And through that process, staying that course, people ended up coming. My family, there's only five brothers. Four of them got saved. Three of my sisters got saved. That's not bad. I had the privilege of holding my sweet brother's hand while he died. I had the privilege of telling my niece how Jesus Christ died for her. She ended up getting, well, her brother did. I'm sorry. Antoinette's biological dad led his sister to the Lord. Through that process, her and I had a connection, and in that connection, she called me while her dad was a captain in the military, was dying of cancer on his deathbed. As I would tell her the words, she would hold his hand. She said, if you want to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. And he bowed his head and said, yes. Tough soldier, paratrooper, fought in the battles. Following Jesus is not without a price. It, it, you got to pay a price. Some people have to leave family in, in the comforts of the United States. Amen. You think it's bad here? Go somewhere else and check it out. I've never been to the Philippines. You have. I've been to Korea where you see dogs hanging out in the, alive out in the, in the areas. They don't even put them in, under refrigeration where they skinned them and, and uh, they eat dog over there. My little dogs you wouldn't, you wouldn't get a snack out of. <laughs> oh, Lisa's already riled up. <laughs> She's throwing the fist out. But I'm just trying to tell you something, brother. You, if you're going to decide to do something for God, it's going to cost you. But the price is not as heavy as the, as the payment that you get back. Can you imagine leading somebody to Jesus Christ? Can you imagine that you just led someone that they could never lose, something they could never lose, some to a place they, shall, they will be with for eternity, that we should be like the one who died for us. Man, what a blessing that is. Following Jesus Christ is not without a price. And I'm, I told you I'm going to be quick because I'm tired and wore out from this morning. Y'all preached me too much this morning. But following the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is never, never, without a price, never without a purpose. Amen. I'm trying to remember my third point. I'm sorry. I have it right here. I just, my eyes are shooting somewhere else. Well, I tell you what, we're having fun tonight, aren't we? I don't want to say the wrong thing. Is not without promise. You see, after you're indicating the following, the cost, what it cost Jesus Christ. He said that you have a great promise of eternal life. You got a place up in heaven glory. Following Jesus, you see, those people that are lost come to Jesus Christ. Your relationship with Jesus Christ grows stronger. Isn't it an amazing thing that the Lord will say it's never with, without a promise? You know what that promise is? There you shall be with us always. You know what the promise is? You know what the payment is? You get to live where he lives. 
to be like who he is for eternity. So, you know what I would suggest? And I told you, I was, came in with the idea of taking very short amount of time with this because I'm, I'm really wore out from this morning. I appreciate it if you pray for my sinuses. It's really whacking my head out. I'm not much on taking medicine. I don't like it because medicines for the long short, they control you. I don't like, if I'm going to be controlled, I hope it's by God, not my flesh and not medicine. But I'm not saying don't take medicine. Somebody comes, well, you said don't do it. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is I don't like them because they control you. But what's your purpose? It'll cost you something, but that price is not even close to the price. You understand me this morning or tonight? It's never without a great prize. What? Well, let's see. Because you're saved, because you led someone to Jesus Christ, you get a crown. Amen? Because you led someone to Jesus Christ, they get to live in a place where no sin can go. They shall be likened unto his, <laughs> can you imagine? They be likened unto his glorious body. They, give the, they get to see the gate of pearl, and they get to walk on the street of gold. But more than that, you get to fellowship with Jesus Christ. Because the alternative is a place called hell. You see, when you look at that thing and think about that thing, following him is great in its detail. Some people say, be your followers of me, even I am also of Christ. Paul said that. Paul's looking at it from his perspective, saying, I'm trying to walk with God the closest I can. People say, well, I, I don't know about that. Well, look, nothing makes a failure but a try. You got to try. Every day when you get up, every night when you go to bed. Amen. Amen. I tell you one thing, my wife has got that new Bible. She's read in two days, 60 some chapters, am I right? About? It's making me feel ashamed of myself. I don't have time to read 60 some chapters. I go, and he said, <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you something, brother. I came in because I am really wiped out with these signs, but I don't want to belabor that point. The whole deal of it is, be followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. That's what Paul said. And Paul laid out a line there, and he laid it down, right down the road, and he said this, follow me as I follow him. Don't, don't look at me because I'm looking at him as I follow him. And what you need to do is make sure Jesus Christ that you're following him. Don't follow a man. Don't follow your preacher. Stay tight to that book and let God be in control. But it's not without purpose, not without a price. Amen. But make sure you be your followers of him. Don't try to imitate someone else. Follow Jesus Christ. How do you do it? Through the Spirit of God, through the Scriptures. That, and not, what, what does it say about the Spirit of God, Chuck? Is that he shall lead you, guide you, and direct you. That's what he's there for. You can't tell me when you get ready to do the wrong thing that that Spirit doesn't say, hey, 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 what are you doing? Where are you at? What's up with you? That's his job. Just keep those three things in mind. It's not without a payment. You're going to pay something for it. It's not without purpose. It's not without a promise. There's a promise. One day you'll stand before him. Man, I, I wish I could hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful. 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 You know what that means? Stick it in there through thick and thin, tough and rough, when it's up, when it's down, when you don't feel like doing it, when, when you're tired and you don't want to mess with it anymore, when you're, when you're tired of dealing with people and attitudes. You got to keep going. You got to remember one thing. It's not about you. I have one lady in my mind, and I can't remember that lady's name for the life of me. 
But I'll have to stand before that lady one day, that friend of yours that died of cancer, Ellen Moore. And the Lord, I'm sitting there, backslidden as a dog, Chuck, and being honest. And the Lord said, witness to her. Tell her about me. I didn't. She died not long after that. As far as I know, went to hell. See, that's, what are you saying that for? Because it's true. It bothered me. There'll be people in your life one day that you didn't witness to, you didn't tell. They're going to look at you and say, what? Why didn't you tell me? What? I, I didn't know you were a Christian. And I'm going to close with this. On, I did the water treatment plant, one of the last jobs I did for Buddy before I uh, went to Bible school. I went uh, back then, 1983, I was making $45,000 a year in 83. And I went from $45,000 to... $80 a week, was it, to go to Bible school. And um, I remember talking to a guy about the Lord there, and uh, he said, oh, I'm a Christian. I said, what? I've been on this job for eight months. You're, you're what? I'm a Christian. I, I know the Lord. And he said, but I'm here to work, not to witness. I know you're supposed to do your job and give them eight hours. I know that. But let Jesus Christ be seen in me. And, oh, by the way, you do have lunch breaks, coffee breaks. You do get off work. Do you get there before work? You, you know. I call them secret service Christians. They know they're saved, but nobody else does. I'm not ashamed of him. He ought to be ashamed of me, but I'm not ashamed of him. And you know what? Following him is not without purpose. He has something for you to do. Find it out, figure it out, and do it. Father, we love you. Lord, I know it was short, but I pray God now that um, you'd help us to understand these small things that sometimes we fail and we forget and we let go. Uh, God, you're so good to us. We pray, Father, now that you bless in Jesus' name, amen. Brother Jared, come on. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Amen. All right. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, pray you be with the pastor. Lord, pray that you help me give him some, uh, some energy and some, um, um, some help, Lord. Lord, be with all those who are away. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.